Hello everyone, my name is Demismu and this is my assistant, The Foot, and today we'll talk about Pythagoras. Pythagoras comes from the island of Samos, not far from Miletus, where the previous philosophers came from. He is an obscure figure, we don't know much about him. The reason for this is that he established a philosophical school, but this school resembled more a secret religious sect than what we would call a school. His followers, for example, allegedly drowned one of their members because he leaked out a new mathematical discovery to the outside world. Because of their seclusive nature, we don't really know what teachings come from Pythagoras himself and what from his later followers. As a result, we'll talk about Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans without trying to determine who said what. Now, in the previous videos, we talked about how philosophy emerges against mythology, with abstract thinking, arguments and all of that. But Pythagoras and his school show us how philosophy never actually abandoned mythological and religious elements in ancient Greece. On the one hand, the Pythagoreans pursue knowledge. They make mathematical discoveries or propose philosophical arguments. On the other hand, they do this in a very secretive and mystical manner. They revere knowledge like it were a sacred religious principle. They also had rules that resembled those that exist in religious sects. For example, they were vegetarians because they believed in reincarnation. All living souls were equal, and after death, a soul that was in a human body could go to an animal body and the other way around. Pythagoras himself is said to have remembered four of his last incarnations, and he also protested against a man who beat a dog, because apparently he could recognize the cries of his former friend coming from the dog. This kind of an attitude extends also to their main and most famous principle, numbers. The Pythagoreans believe that the arche of all things are numbers. All is number, they said. Now, on the one hand, we see how the Pythagoreans think abstractly. Like we said in the previous videos, abstraction and arguments are what distinguish philosophy from mythology, and numbers are abstract, even more abstract than water or air the previous philosophers proposed as the arche. Numbers exist only as abstractions. Thales, for example, took some material stuff, water, and made it into an abstraction. So we could say, the Pythagoreans made a step forward. They don't begin with concrete things at all. Instead, they immediately start with abstractions. But this is where we would be wrong. Although numbers for us exist only in the abstract, the Pythagoreans still didn't make a sharp distinction between material and immaterial. They regarded numbers as the principle of all things, but also as something extended in space. They represented numbers as dots. This is number 1, this is number 2, and this is 3. You connect these dots and you get a triangle. So number 3 is materially present in things that have triangular shapes in them. Similarly, all things result from a mixture of two kinds of numbers. The odd and the even numbers. Now, odd numbers stand for limitation and even numbers represent the unlimited. And the Pythagoreans argued that those things that have more even numbers are bad, because having no limits or measure is bad, and things with more odd numbers are good, because limit and moderation are good. For example, 1 represents unity and is the originator of all numbers, but 2, an even number, represents opinion. It takes 2 to have an opinion and get into a fight. Now, as we said, Numbers are more abstract than water or air, but numbers also point to another development in the history of philosophy. We saw how Thales and his follower asked about the origin of all things, and they chose some stuff like water or air. In other words, they were concerned with the composition of the world. Their main question was what the world is made of, where does it come from? With the Pythagoreans, the focus seems to shift onto something else. They are not only concerned with explaining the material composition of the world, 
but with the question of order and harmony. And this is where numbers, dots and geometrical shapes come into play. The Pythagoreans viewed the cosmos as an expression of mathematical relations. An example of this is how they mix mathematics, astronomy and music. They observe that the length of a string on a music instrument corresponds to a different sound. The length of a string, which can be expressed in numbers, determines the sound. And then they apply this to the movement of the sun and the planets. The movement of astronomical bodies produces a sound we cannot hear depending on their distance or length in space to each other. And they call these sounds the music of the spheres. So mathematics comes together with music and astronomy to create a harmonious image of order in the world. To conclude, the Pythagoreans proposed numbers as the arche of all things. They regarded numbers as the material element of all things. But they were also the first philosophers to focus on the ideas of order and harmony in the world. This is where numbers play an important role. The world can be expressed in mathematical relations. And these ideas of order and harmony will become one of the central and most enduring themes in later history of philosophy. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.